Hi, John Hardy here again. Looking at Aussie dollar uh, this morning after the employment numbers overnight where the report looked slightly good on the employment side or the payroll side, uh, although the internals of that number not so great because much of that was in part-time employment gains. Uh, and then on the uh, uh, the unemployment rate, that was the negative news. It jumped to 6%, which is the, the high for the cycle um, uh, recently. So that was negative news, and Aussie fell on that. Anyway, we'll look at how uh, Aussie dollar looked last night before we even knew uh, what was going to happen with these employment reports. What I did uh, on my live account, which was to buy a call option, because it feels like Aussie is either going to shoot much higher or, or head much lower in the coming uh, uh, week or two. And now what to do about that call option now that Aussie dollar did go higher, but then it's come back lower. And in that way, we can actually take advantage of the fact that we have that call option as an asset to use it as a, as a kind of stop, particularly because it's leveraged. It was a cheap option that was bought, uh, and therefore this, the, it, it can be used as, a, as an effective uh, stop in the situation I find myself in uh, this morning. Now, just to have a brief look at Aussie dollar. Again, middle, middle of the zone, we had this big sell-off reversal on the RBA rhetoric, have come back higher. We were coming into key date. It felt like it, uh, especially with the dollar view, possibly getting a bit of traction overnight on those FOMC minutes, minutes uh, felt like it was either going to pull back higher and possibly very significantly so on a very important release like the employment report. So I wanted to protect the upside, uh, and I was also interested in downside, actually having traded some, some uh, downside spot recently. Um, and that was uh, on that demonstration account that was stopped out. Did not have a, a spot position on, on the live account, regardless, either sharply lower or sharply higher. And in this case, I felt like sharply higher was the cheap way to protect uh, on a very strong import, uh, report. So I bought a call option, which is uh, quite easy to do. Let's uh, go ahead and close the box here. We see we can pull up a call option box. Uh, sorry under the trade modules forex options trades um, pull up an Aussie call level and it'll give you an error because it's saying it'll val invalid date to go to today's date uh, if we go to a date I picked next Friday uh, feels like we need to get some kind of resolution by next Friday on all of this so we can see it e even with the call level last night the the spot was uh, some somewhat higher so the equivalent call level now would be around uh, 9420 so that that's about a 20 pip stop and because 20 pips would be very small for a spot position uh, trade this you can uh, we could take a slightly larger uh, position of course the risk being we lose the entire premium but because it's 19 pips we can possibly trade twice the amount we would if we were trading spot depending on risk tolerance. Uh, and what that gets, because I bought that option, it was a 94.40 call. So we'll look at what that means. So here we are trading after the FOMC minutes, the dollar a bit weaker. I put in a, a call around here, 94.40. We get the employment report, it spikes higher, and then back lower into this morning. Now, okay, it looks like with this kind of reversal, it's a bearish reversal. I'm going to lose all that premium on the, on the call option. Well, I can also take the advantage of the fact that I have this call option to short some spot now uh, in a slightly smaller amount, or maybe half of what that call option, uh, the amount for that call option, and then use that call option as a stop. And then I've got all the way until the 18th to allow this position to, to run. So if we're on a 20, 20 tick uh, uh, call position, 40 ticks on half the size, pays for the option. So if we, if we trade back down to, and I shorted around 94 this morning, trade that down back down towards uh, 93.60, the option's paid for itself, and of course if we progress lower, then the position overall is moving into profit. On the upside, of course, the risk is sideways action, nothing happening. But as well, when you own a call option, um, the uh, it gives you the, a chance to, if it explodes to the upside in the coming six days, it's twice the size, so eventually it will pay for itself and then and begin to, uh, to earn money once you've paid for the spot position moving to the strike price, and then it have to get belong above the premium you paid, etc. So it would need a considerable move. So there's a, there is a rather large zone up here where this would be a pay very little or, or uh, incur some losses. So we'll look for Aussie dollar to see what happens next. Uh, I think right now, if, if I was coming in with no position, 
I would prefer to be to be short. But the nice thing about having that call option is, of course, I don't have to worry about a stop level. Um, and, and the main risk being that it's static from here or, or, or goes slightly higher to somewhere just below or right around my, my, my strike price because then I lose both on the small spot position that's short and I lose because my premium on that 94.40 strike uh, has eroded. So we'll look uh, to where it heads uh, in the days to come. But um, again, one way to, to, to look at uh, uh, trading these, uh, these types of events and, and how to deal with, uh, uh, if you're long volatility, actually using that as an asset um, on the other side.